what if somebody came up with the same imagery with 10 prompts? And as a programmer, I have this itch for perfection. Like you will never be satisfied with 10 prompts because it will always seem too easy to you. And you will say, what if I try the 11th one and I can make it a little bit better? And you will either make it or break it. And then you're like, let's try the 12th one. Maybe this will be a little bit better. Maybe the color doesn't look good here. So I think you're going to end up with a 600 prompts anyway. Even if I had same image in mind that this is the image I want to make with mid journey, mm -hmm. I can never recreate that image that Jason came up with. Some people are really good at prompt engineering. And it's a human skill. It's a learnable skill. Mm -hmm. It's not a skill people are born with. You have to learn it. And some people are really good at it. And I think the law should accept that fact. Take At least take that into consideration that, hey, there is a human skills involved, right? AI is a tool, a powerful one. But it's the human behind the prompt that truly shapes the output. Otherwise, what would come out? And I had a discussion with Debanksha Sarkar, COO of Eclim AI, who does intelligent buildings and whose background in academia with a master's in data science and another master's of science with a focus in his research on active learning, training machine learning models with a smaller data set than they traditionally had by focusing on the most useful examples apply so much here. That's why I love talking to data scientists because what he saw was that prompt engineering is a skill and the courts don't recognize it. But one court did granting a copyright that I'm going to show you in a little bit the image and why it was granted the copyright and what that might mean to you. And we start with Jason Allen's award-winning AI generated art, Theatre de Opera Spatiale which won a Colorado award, but was denied copyright because it wasn't a human being that created it. Let's take a look at that. My next question is about uh, copyright issues because we, are, we have been talking about uh, generative AI for a while now. Uh, and I, I was familiar with the uh, case of uh, uh, Colorado Festival and the person who used 600 prompts to uh, uh, edit the art talk to me about it. I'd love to know your take on the whole situation. Like, how did it happen? Whether it sh he should have won the competition and what's, what's the aftermath of it? He was very open about stating that it came from AI. And what's funny is if he just didn't say anything, he would have got the copyright because they can't detect it. So there is that liar's dilemma that mm -hmm. if he just said it. But to me, the act of 600 prompts... And somebody actually said to me, I, I brought up this question. They said, well, what if you're really smart and it only takes you 10? Does, can we say that the amount is the, is it creative? Because what we're trying to say is what is the original human expression in the work? I think that's part of the flawed thing. The precedent says human creation. That's all that can be copyrighted. But there was another lawsuit that came up and the person actually created a comic, I won't say comic book because it's a little mm. bit more graphic novel. Yep. The imagery was from AI, but she wrote it and she formatted the book. Yep. So they let her copyright the book and the words, human That's created, so but I could take her images. So the images in the book were not copyright. And I give the law credit for this to be that nuanced because law usually is very, it has to be. But they were able to recognize that this person's input, and that's where it comes down to, to bring it down to copyright. What are you putting into it? How can we measure that? And how can we value that? So their human expertise is reflected in the work. Mm. And I don't think AI would have come up with that. Because they're still saying, hey, if I shoot something, I'm like, okay, it's the light, it's the exposure, it's this, that. There's a whole bunch of variables. If I go up to it with an image, so for example, if I took an original image and put it to AI, I could copyright that. But if I take... AI and make the image and then make it my own. Currently, I don't believe there's any other precedence, but I cannot copyright that. And I think that's flawed. What if somebody came up with the same imagery with 10 prompts? I don't think that is possible because I'm not an artist and 
as a programmer, I have this proclivity or I should say itch <clears throat> to put it crudely, this itch for perfection. Like you will never be satisfied with 10 prompts because it will always seem too easy to you. And you will say, what if I try the 11th one and I can make it a little bit better? And you will either make it or break it. And then you're like, let's try the 12th one. Maybe this will be a little bit better. Maybe the color doesn't look good here. So I think you're going to end up with uh, 600 prompts anyway. But uh, you are absolutely spot on on saying that. Even if I had same image in mind that this is the image I want to make with mid journey, mm -hmm. I will never, at, at least at this point, I can never recreate that image that Jason came up with. Not possible <laughs> at all. Yeah. And which is why now there is a designation called prompt engineers. I mean, it's a real job. Right. Some people are really good at prompt engineering and it's a human skill. It's a learnable skill mm -hmm. and uh, it comes with practice and knowledge. It doesn't come from the air. Like it's not it's not a skill people are born with. You have to learn it. So there is human skills involved in prompt engineering, which is why people like me are really bad at it. And some people are really good at it. And I think the law should accept that fact, take, at least take that into consideration that, hey, there is a human skills involved, right? You make a great point. We should, within these generative AIs, be able to detect the process. For example, we have semantic analysis. We have language analysis where you can understand the expertise in the question. Maybe this is silly, but if they could be able to track that, or even as an artist, I can say, hey, I'll pay an extra point that I can then take this to court and show through the analysis of it, through the analysis of my prompts, which will show, I think, not only volume, perfection, but also the questions you're asking. Because in the end, the law is looking at it and saying, all we're seeing is, to the point, all we're seeing is the output. Mm. we're not seeing the process yeah if we knew the process and i could then be able to say wow that's showing expertise that would be a really interesting legal argument because then you could say wait here's the process because what the problem is is all the artists are like hey here's the output it's all physical analog world doesn't have any way of tracking the process the digital mm. world does so maybe, maybe that's a possible solution to that as well interesting and People always talk about copyright issues uh, in generative AI, but I think sometimes when we talk about these topics, what I have seen is that there are two different types of copyright legal issues going on and people tend to mix them up. One copyright issue is if I'm an artist, an artist like me who is gener generating something using prompts and can I copyright it? So we see that prompt engineering, if it's not seen as a skill, if it's all the machine doing it, then what's the point of a prompt? But one of the key parts is, where's the data that comes from it? Because a work to get copyright has to be original. You can't just copy what somebody else did. And now you see Getty Images and New York Times and everyone's lawsuit for years now that just keep coming up. Well, now we get the latent space excuse used by Stable Diffusion against Getty Images. Latent space is a mathematical concept that refers to capturing the essential features of the input data, enabling AI systems to comprehend and process it more quickly, taking the image and breaking it down into tokens and parts. Because we need to get a copyright, human authorship, creative control, how much the model has to do with it, and is it, again, substantially similar to something else, which leads to the uncertainty that is limiting copyrights, except in the one I'm going to show you in the end. So what was Getty Images doing and what's the deal with this latent space excuse? Yeah. Then on the other hand, there is another legal battle going on where companies like Midjourney is being sued by Getty Images and Adobe Stock, these companies for stealing their images. So that is a different legal battle. These two are separate. 
So some yeah. sometimes we uh, confuse them. So let's talk about the other one, the company that came up with the stable diffusion. Uh, they took the images from the internet and they trained the models on whatever they could find. And uh, th- there are articles, there are research papers now that sometimes the these models spits out images, generates images uh, that has something that looks like Getty, <laughs> which is uh, absolutely <laughs> funny. Uh, and they 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 caught red they, they were caught red handed there, and they are saying that well, and they had to sort of fine tune their legal argument according to that. And now they are saying that. So even though we use the images, the image that are being generated, it's not taking the actual image and spitting it out. We have this idea called latent space where we are storing everything in a matrix format mm-hmm. in whatever dimension. And then we use a decoder model to make the final image. So the we are breaking down the image into this uh, space called latent space. So the final output, even though it looks like the original one, it's actually not the original one, even though they look very similar. So that's their legal argument. What do you think about that? One of the systemic problems was there's, there's this openness to AI, which I like, but they just scraped without permission. Mm. But how far do we go? Because Clearview AI, that's the facial recognition company, right? They scraped everybody's data, billions of pictures, sold it to our government, who, by the way, could only buy it through third parties. They couldn't Mm -hmm. do this, but they could buy it from third parties. This is radical. So I didn't give them permission, but it is social media, okay? You've given them permission. No one got asked for permission. Now they are. They're making deals, and I could see a tiered level where if you deal with more professional, like Hollywood level, obviously that's going to be a tiered level where you're not not going to be like paying a mid-journey cheapo, cheapo price, but you're going to be paying for that superior intelligence and giving that Getty images. And I'm not sure if that model is flawed in an old model, by the way, but just assuming, because it's funny, that's what we have now. We own it. We license it. We control the IP. I don't know how you can do that, but it comes down to, I think, really scraping. And it's sort of like the old Silicon Valley thing, right? You know, break things fast, do stuff, don't ask permission. Talk about flawed. The very act of scraping violates copyright rules if it's done without permission. Latent space is a nice excuse, but you wouldn't get the data without taking in the image in the first place. It just is common sense. And without permission, this is called a derivative work. So that latent space argument misses the point. In fact, they've had to settle with Getty Images because nobody would recognize that. If you take content without permission, you're violating what copyright protects. And you're acting like it's all okay. And you have permission? Really? Time to ring the bell for scarcity. LLMs will have some data, but not others. And don't think this won't impact the cost. It's cheap because it's free, but even there, the value isn't there yet. Look at what Reddit's doing to in reaction to all these lawsuits and realizing why are we letting them scrape our data for free? And now we won't have access to it except for certain LLMs like Google. Shouldn't I be able to learn from it? Shouldn't I be able to pull it in? Couldn't I even pay a fee or be in an institution of education? where those teachers could get. I just think it's sad if what we're going to do is have these like, because part of the biases, it's a bunch of garbage data. Yeah, that's a, that's a mean way to say it, but it's not the good data. Absolutely true. Especially most of the stuff that came from a Reddit. I read Reddit Mm -hmm. all the time. Mm -hmm. Most of it is garbage. Like Mm -hmm. people venting about stuff they don't know about and all of that went inside ChatGPT, uh, and then uh, uh, now, after all all that, after OpenAI sort of decided to become a for profit from a non profit organization, and a research institute decided to become a for profit multi billion dollar company, uh, 
Reddit decided, hey, now we are going to make our API paid as well. So you cannot have access to Reddit data without paying us. So yeah, the, the world is sort of becoming kind of isolationists, I'm going to say. Nothing is open source. Oh, wait a minute. That will require a whole transformation. Yes. Welcome to AI. And that's my hope. So let's make it a little bit more open source so we don't leave all that creativity behind while siloing infor information and IP copyright conflicts. So as legal battles rage and paywalls rise in the West, totally not recognizing copyright for AI-generated art yet, though there will be guidance coming out, at least from the U.S. copyright very soon, the question looms, can innovation survive in a world of fear and uncertainty, acting like there are no copyright rules they have to follow? So let's take a look at the first AI-generated image to get a copyright, and where do you think it happened? China allows copyright protection for AI-generated works because it makes sense. Here are the key details. The person goes to Stable Diffusion and creates this work of art through prompting, then posts it on social media, sharing it with a watermark that helps protect it and says, this is mine. The person, the defendant in this case, takes that image and puts it on basically their blog or website without attribution or credit. And the court determines that the plaintiff, the person who created it, the human user, was the rightful owner of that copyright image and that the defendant was found to have infringed on it. So let's break down what that actually means while we look at the facts of the case in front of us. So the beginning with the how the court found it was that number one, the choice of an AI provider, the service provider, this is very key, to create that image was an intellectual, was an artistic choice. Then this person inputted around 30 prompts and really key over 120 negative prompts to determine the output. Using detailed prompts like Japan Idol, cool pose, viewing at camera and film grain, and then adjusted the prompts based on what was going on. And those negative prompts are really important because that shows they're not just typing in a few prompts and taking it out. You're not going to get a copyright for that. But it's digging down and actually doing the detailed human work that was proven through the process of prompts. So if you're creating AI art and you want to prove it, keep your prompts, document your process so you can show the human level that was involved. And by setting and resetting technical parameters, to produce, choose, and rearrange the pictures, the court said this is definitely an intellectual contribution. So that copyright protection was given to that image because the human, the prompt engineering made it, just like Debanksha said at the beginning. Prompt engineering is a skill, an art, a science. It is not something that just comes out of an AI model. And in fact, the Chinese courts do not recognize that AI models can be the creator. They're not human input they're not creative they're data what we do with it is what forms the copyright though i will warn you that that getty images lawsuit still implies and hangs over people because in february 2024 the guangxu internet court ruled that an ai company infringed on the copyright of an iconic japanese superhero ultraman by copying and adapting basically doing what stable diffusion is scraping and bringing it into their data as some images generated by that company's AI service in China were found to be substantially similar to the character. I mean, after all, you can't type in, create me a Yoda-like character and start printing and selling Yoda and say you have a copyright to something that was done. Because in the West, we're doing that right now. We've said copyright law doesn't matter. All these AI models have scraped it without permission. Well, that's what a copyright protects somebody from having done to them. And if you create any AI image in the US right now, in Europe, you'd have little to no protection. There is no copyright. So anyone can take it and unlike in China, do what they want to do. But that Guangxu court found the company liable, the model liable for bringing in those Ultraman images. So that's a warning to ChatGPT, to Midjourney, to Leonardo. All of you who are scraping data and bringing it in, if you're generating images that are substantially similar, that's what copyright protects. So where can we go with AI copyright? My goal is 
let's follow China because what they said makes sense and they said it didn't apply to anyone who has an AI prompt by each case it's got to show prompt engineering follow-up negative prompts that actually create something that takes the image because I can tell you the best images I see coming out of mid journey are people who know what they're looking for photographers artists or people skilled who develop the skill in understanding that in getting writing out of it writers and people who know how to write generally have a better output than those who don't so while AI can do some things the stuff that's copyrightable still relies on human skill way to go China